Alleluia. Christ is risen. Friends, it is a brave and resilient and countercultural thing to be staying at home, keeping ourselves and others safe, knowing we have a tough road ahead, and still celebrating the resurrection in the midst of it. We have sat at the foot of the cross. We know sorrow so deeply. And in it and through it and with one another, we boldly proclaim Christ is risen. Death does not have the last word. Hope and joy and above all else, love give us our guidance and strength. Happy Easter and welcome to worship with McAllister Plymouth United Church. Let us sing.
it is good to be together this Easter Sunday. Though we may be dwelling in Good Friday or Holy Saturday experiences in our own lives, the call to proclaim resurrection has never been more important. In the face of death and despair, love wins. Hope prevails. We are not alone. A special welcome to all those tuning in for the first time today. We've been at this live stream thing for a few weeks now, but we definitely don't have it perfected. So we really appreciate your grace as we figure out together how to worship and be the church in these times. Our mission as a church is to grow in love of God and neighbor. Whether we gather in person or virtually, this holds true. If you feel called to be the church by connecting deeply with one another, Get in touch with us for the links to the weekly men's breakfast, the bi-weekly women's breakfast, the bi-weekly youth parents meetup, or the weekly youth lunches and fellowship. If you feel called to be the church by showing up for one another's immediate needs, consider joining an action team or the connecting tree. If you feel called to be the church by advocating for justice in these times, get in touch with our Isaiah team to see how our strategy has shifted as we continue to organize for a caring economy and a multiracial democracy. We, go, we grow stronger and more resilient when we can be the church together in these times. A word of gratitude. I have said in so many places that in the midst of this pandemic, we have all become ourselves, but more so. This congregation has grown even more caring and generous and connected since the start of all of this. So thank you to the folks who are making calls every week to be sure no one is left behind or forgotten in this isolating time. Thank you for the beautiful flowers we received from an unknown church source. Thank you for those of you who are grocery shopping and making masks and running errands and providing tech support for one another. Thank you for your kindness, your support, and your generosity. You all are teaching me each day how to live as a resurrection people. It's a strange time to be celebrating resurrection. One of the ways I've come to understand it is that we are undergoing a transformation. We may not have reached the new part the new life part on the other side. But God is certainly working on us. So I invite us to respond to each prayer request from our community in the following way. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Let us be in a spirit of prayer as we lift up joys and concerns of our community. Lonnie asks for prayers for our neighborhood businesses and all who are self-employed and struggling, not only with financial issues, but the heartache of seeing hard work and dreams crumble. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Carrie S. asks for prayers for her cousin with a serious underlying health condition who has COVID-19. God of transformation, Hear our prayer. Stephanie H. prays for us to continue to give ourselves and one another grace during and after this pandemic. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Deb M. asks for prayers for Governor Walls and our leaders who need our support to do the right things to bring us through this crisis. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Jen K asks for prayers for her dog Daisy who has an inflamed lymph node, praying it is an infection and not something more serious. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Stephanie D asks for prayers for Sandra G and her family that their needs might be met even without employment or income, that they may stay safe even while living un among unsafety, and that she may experience the miracle of improved health. Thankfulness that we are able to be present in community virtually together despite the distance. 
Sandra and family, so good to be with you this morning. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Kira P. prays for the folks in our community who are struggling to see the Easter light at the end of this several months long Good Friday tunnel. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Janet H. prays on this Easter Sunday morning when our church is usually filled with flowers given in honor or in memory of those we love. She would like us to remember in deep gratitude those who we love and honor in our lives, and also those persons on the McAllister Plymouth Deacons care list who would on other Easter's be receiving some of the flowers. God of transformation, hear our prayer. We received an anonymous prayer request for all prisoners and persons who live at the mercy of others. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Judy H. prays for her brother, Alan, who has been in the hospital since Monday in Lewis, Delaware, for internal bleeding and dizziness, but not COVID-19. His wife, Pat, can't go into the hospital. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Jane L. asks for prayers for everyone at Episcopal Homes. There are over 1,000 people plus staff between the facilities in St. Paul and Minneapolis. All are required to wear masks as they can get them. There are no infections yet. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Deb J asks for prayers for Easter joy and health for those in nursing homes and their caregivers. God of transformation, hear our prayer. A church member asks for prayers for all people in maintaining their hope and faith, but specifically the young people. God of transformation, hear our prayer. A church member asks for prayers for his cousin Deborah, recovering from a stroke in Oakland alone with family unable to visit. God of transformation, hear our prayer. A church member requests prayers for his 88-year-old parents whose retirement community in Indianapolis has this week had its first case of COVID-19, which resulted in the death of a friend. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Prayers for Gail in Arizona as she undergoes a biopsy next week, afraid that she has cancer. God of transformation, hear our prayer. Let us draw together all of our prayers spoken aloud or in the silence of our hearts. O oh God, on this day of resurrection, remind us of the hope that lies just underneath the surface of all that appears hopeless. Draw us near to one another as we remember that we belong to one another because we belong to you, O oh God. Guide us in Jesus' path of healing and compassion. Through Christ we pray. Amen. anxious times. We have been inviting God's peace to dwell within and among and move beyond us with some simple hand motions. I invite you to follow along with me. First, hands on our heart, we invite God's peace to dwell within us. Hands open, 
we invite God's peace to dwell among us. Hands outstretched, we invite God's peace to extend beyond us out into our neighborhood, our communities, and into our hurting world. Peace within, peace among, peace beyond. May God's peace be with you always. Amen. Attention, attention all children. This is a special time for you, so lean in. I've got an Easter message for you. I wonder if there's any kids around here who might be... Oh, good morning, Isa. Good morning. Well, it's Easter. Feels a little different, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what are the things we usually do on Easter? go to church and sing and there's flowers and we go to our grandparents house and what's your favorite thing about going to our grandparents house eating Easter ham the Easter ham mm. well this is a really hard thing we're doing staying home to try and stop the spread of this virus doing hard things can also be sort of scary is this like the hardest thing you think you've ever had to do probably yeah Probably. Well, sometimes when we have to face hard things or do hard things, we feel a little bit like an egg. Now, is an egg shell strong or fragile? Fragile. Yeah, fragile. And sometimes <clears throat> eggs can easily be broken. Hmm. Especially when they come across something hard like this table sometimes when we face hard things we feel fragile too we worry that we worry what this hard thing is going to do to us but Easter is a time of remembering how our faith can help us get through hard times today we remember that after Jesus died it was a very hard time for his friends and followers how could anything be harder than losing someone you love? But then three days later, the angel told his friends that Jesus has been raised. And they began to feel his presence again, and his love continued to live in them. This love was strong and helped them through a very, very hard time. And this love can help us through this hard time. So we don't feel so afraid, so we don't feel so fragile, and hard things don't seem so hard. Hmm. Easter reminds us that we celebrate a love that is unbreakable. Amen. Good morning, Adam. Happy Easter. Good morning, Corinne. Well, this is different, doing a Zoom worship sermon together. I think uh, it was a good idea, though, for us to, to share this preaching moment on this important day. Really excited to do it. Um, we're going to start by reading some scripture. The Gospels tell three different accounts of the resurrection story each with their own spin. Matthew's version is simple and powerful. As we read this story together, see where you imagine yourself as the events unfold. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, <clears throat> Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook 
and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. May these words be to us, our light and our life. Thanks be to God. The women didn't know one another very well, but they knew the one who died intimately, each in her own way, as a dear friend, as a beloved teacher, as a son. After he died, they knew what to do, each death is unique, but the Jewish burial rituals were the same. Wrap the body in linen cloth, entomb the body, keep vigil, watch and wait. But it is impossible to keep vigil for three days and two nights without needing something to eat, a bit of rest. The women trust that the guard will keep the vigil for them while they try to shut their eyes for a few hours, tend to their grief. Two of the three Marys return at dawn after a fitful night, feeling guilty about their absence, but grateful for the brief respite. On their walk, they make small talk, comment on the beautiful sunrise. They expect to find the same tomb, the same stone in front of it, the same guard keeping watch. But instead, nothing is the way they expected it to be. The ground starts to shake under their feet. A bright light appears. The stone rolls away from the door to the tomb. The guards are shaking in their boots, too shocked to do anything about all of this. And most terrifying of all, the tomb is empty. The women look at one another and see pure fear in each other's eyes. Did they make this happen by leaving? Did someone steal the body? What were they going to do? What could they do? But then an angel says to them, do not be afraid. The most terrifying moment of their lives, they receive a moment of reassurance. Not that there is nothing to fear, but that they are not alone. God is with them. Joy is possible. Do not be afraid. Afraid would be a good description of the disciples as well. <clears throat> we might wonder where were they that first Easter morning? Still asleep? Still awake after a grief-filled night? Paralyzed by uncertainty and unable to know what to do next? The last time we heard about the disciples, in the Gospel of Matthew, they were in the Garden of Gethsemane when their beloved teacher was betrayed before their eyes and taken away like a criminal, they knew the threats were real. Perhaps the valiant thing to do would be to fight, but Jesus said no. Perhaps the right thing to do would have been to stand up and challenge the arrest. 
Jesus goes willingly. Could they be next, they wondered. Fear turns to self-preservation and they all run for it. A little later, Peter is identified as a follower of Jesus. Immediately defensive, he quickly denies knowing Jesus not once, but three times. Fear turns to denial. Denial turns to grief as Jesus is crucified. Where did their grief and fear take them? We don't hear where they are in the Gospel of Matthew, but the Gospel of John provides an alternate ending to this first Easter day. John chapter 20 tells us that they were all together in someone's home, doors locked, to stay safe from the threats outside. Yet even here, terrified, alone, and uncertain, Jesus appears that day, offering reassurance, saying, peace be with you. Even stuck at home, the resurrection reaches them and offers them the same reassuring message given to the women outside the empty tomb. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Adam, doesn't it feel almost silly to say these words right now? Like, I'm sure it felt absurd to the disciples, to those women at the tomb, to hear those words. Do not be afraid when there is literally everything to fear. I find myself thinking about who the Marys are in our lives today in the face of this pandemic, this fearful time. The people who are at the front lines, who see the scary stuff, who are caregivers responsible for tending to the fragile parts of all of this. Doctors and nurses and PCAs and hospital janitors, grocery clerks and garbage collectors and delivery drivers, funeral directors, family members of those who have died. They're standing on quaking ground. Instead of the teacher, the savior, the one they expected, they find an empty tomb. But the Easter story tells us that these people are not alone. The angel proclaims to them, do not be afraid, not because there is nothing for them to fear, but because they are not alone. For those of us who have the privilege to stay home, we are called to be God's hands and feet in the world, walking alongside those women at the empty tomb. We are called to contact our elected officials and advocate for a higher minimum wage for essential workers, and adequate personal protective equipment for medical personnel, and paid sick leave. We're called to send notes expressing our gratitude and to sew masks for those who need them and to stay home to keep those who must leave safe. We are called to pray, always to pray. I find myself in these moments feeling like what I have to offer the women at the tomb is not enough. They are making this incredible sacrifice and I'm here feeling like my life is hard. But in the story of the resurrection, in this part where the scary stuff is happening, we don't yet know what's going on, we learn something amazing about resilience. We can make it through this part together if we all give the best of what we have to offer and trust that what we bring is enough. Some days our best might be resisting yelling at our quarantine partner for doing that horribly annoying thing one more time. Other days our best might be going on a long walk in the sun to tend to our own mental health. Other days our best might be calling our friends to check up on them. Other days our best might be donating to a fund for folks who are unemployed and unable to access government support. 
none of it ever feels like enough. None of it ever will. But the core of our faith reminds us that we are in this together with God. Our faith reminds us that we are called to community. Our faith reminds us that whatever we have or are or bring to our community is enough. I am so glad we are in this together, you and I and the staff, along with this wonderful church community. We are still the church called to be witnesses to God's transforming love. I imagine that the disciples that first Easter Sunday were also trying to figure out how to keep their beloved community together. The good news of the resurrection, though, comes to them even though they are stuck at home. It meets them where they are, renews their spirits, and leads them to continue their witness. These days, my spirit is renewed by seeing things like videos of families singing and dancing together in their living rooms and watching Satya and many others sew masks for hospitals, being called by Isaiah to protect our upcoming elections so that no one has to choose between staying healthy and voting, and hearing stories from many of a congregation members of families being reunited, even reconciled by Zoom. We can be witnesses to the resurrection even now, wherever we are. When it seems like fighting this virus has taken so much away, the resurrection calls us back to life, reminding us that there is more than we can see, more to our lives than this pandemic and more ways to experience and share God's love even now. As we talked about how to celebrate Easter and the resurrection in the midst of this pandemic, it was a little tempting to hold off and just wait. We wondered how can we celebrate the joy of resurrection now when so many people are either still living the tragedy of Good Friday or the emptiness and uncertainty of Holy Saturday. Shouldn't our Easter celebration wait until this is all over? The day when we no longer have to stay home and social distancing ends will certainly feel like a resurrection day. All you have to do is watch people dance and hug in the streets of Wuhan, China, after their lockdown was lifted to have hope for the day that we too will arise. But the resurrection of Jesus didn't wait for the conditions to be just right, for the world to be ready for God's gift of new life. It came in the midst of everything, in the midst of the fear and uncertainty. It started small in the lives of just a few people and grew. And now Easter is a reality that meets us where we are, wherever we are. It doesn't just leave us there. Our Easter faith can be a source of spiritual resilience every day. When we discover choices after feeling like we have no choice. When we are reminded that we can always push the reset button with God and ourselves. When God continues to be faithful to God's people, just like before. When we remember we are not alone and in fact are interconnected to all things. And when God's love liberates us from fear and what feels like impossible circumstances. We are going to need that spiritual resilience for what is ahead. There will be many days when we can't see the transformation happening. There will be many days when we feel worn down by the length of this upheaval and what it demands of us. There will be many days when we experience grief on a level we never have before. But if there's anything our faith has to teach us, it's that God is working on us, even when we can't see it maybe especially when we can't see it. 
There is nothing redemptive about suffering, but there are ways of living that allow us to address our trauma and heal and grow stronger as a result. We are an Easter people. And that means in the face of the worst, we grow. We grow stronger. We grow more connected. We grow in compassion and understanding. Like those green shoots just below the Earth's surface, we may still be living in darkness today, but we are allowing ourselves to be transformed, preparing ourselves for a beautiful and long awaited emergence to be God's beloved community today and tomorrow and forevermore. Amen.
Will you please join me in prayer? So here we are, God, in the midst of a global pandemic, we arrive at Easter morning, a day when the calendar proclaims victory, but the world is countering with illness and death. In truth, seldom in our lives have we needed Easter as much as we need it today. We need the promise of new beginnings, of new life on the other side of calamity. We need the affirmation of your creatively transforming activity in the world. We need the message embedded in the Easter story that declares in all times and places, no matter how dire, that death is not the end. We may have feared our alleluias would be tone deaf to the suffering around us, but no, our alleluias resound with the truth symbolized in this amazing story, that your love is stronger than hopelessness, stronger than death, brimming with promise, alive with possibilities, calling us forward with renewed determination to put our best selves into the work of building a just and compassionate world. In this time of social distancing, we have learned all over again the power of community and of relationship. So we give you thanks for all those who have brought friendship, love, and laughter into our eyes, lives. We thank you for those who have listened to our fears, encouraged our faith, held out to us the promise of hope, and stood by us in our trials. We thank you for all those we love who have departed to your eternal care. May this be a day of resurrection for us too. Raise us up from hopeless dismay at violence, illness and death, selfishness and greed, fear and indifference. Renew our conviction that there is always something we can do, always something we can contribute to the well-being of creation. Lift us up to the newness of life, to fresh insights, to undiscovered possibilities. Lead us in paths of peace and justice, reconciliation and compassion. Help us to be your encouraging voice, your enfolding arms, your listening ear to those who are discouraged, dissatisfied, or disheartened. Empower us to be restorers of the earth, friend to animals and trees. Encourage us to put our trust in you and your unfailing presence. May we learn by heart the Easter message that you are always already at work within the world and within us. That even in the bleakest times, you quietly are transforming us and that you will ever lead us to new possibilities, new opportunities, new life. We pray with wonder and gratitude in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray saying, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this point, I usually say something like, may the ushers come forward for the morning offering. Obviously, that won't work in this virtual setting, but concrete support is still important to the work of the church. To give, you can text GIVE to MPUC to 73256. Follow the prompts. You can send a check to the church in the mail. You can click on the Give button on the McAllister Plymouth website. We found on Sunday mornings that can be a pretty heavy traffic time for online giving overall. So you may find it easier to give later in the day or on another day altogether. Thank you for your patience and your flexibility.
Beloved, on this Easter Sunday, I wish for all of us peace. May the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We hear these words from Henri Frederick Amiel. Life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who made us, who loves us with an unbreakable love and who raises us up be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.